Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, bringing you a grand solar minimum update, flute accompanied like none other. We're talking Tuesday, December 18th, 10 p.m. Mountain Time. GFS model showing heavy snows tilting Oregon, British Columbia, and then a double whammy coming through Ontario, Quebec on the 21st, 22nd, and then the day after Christmas. Heads up, Ottawa, you may get it right here. The 28th will make it, and it'll make it a white Christmas or a white holiday for the rest of us. Call it Festivus, but stick with us because you've entered boom time and it's not even centered. There it is. Yes, kids, it's boom time. Join us. Powerful storm to hammer West Coast, disrupt holiday travel into next week. This father and daughter were just enjoying the 50-foot waves and they were accosted by the media. The storms is causing dangerously high surf along the West Coast and could be deadly for those ignoring warnings to stay out of the water. Let's check it out. It's just really pretty, you know, you know it's windy and it's a high, high risk, it's so really fun. High surf warnings affecting the west coast from southern California to Washington really with some beaches expected to, to see 50 see. foot waves. It. These waves could creep up onto their chest, take them into the, the Pacific Ocean. Some sandbagging against waves that may break over this seawall. Others venturing to beaches to witness the biggest wave event so far this year. So we were choosing to stay, stay away from the breakwaters, but still enjoy the waves and enjoy the uh, spectacular display of Mother Nature. These larger swells are expected to affect beaches through Wednesday, so keep an eye out for red flag warnings. Like we're not going to go into the water, but we're just so enjoying it. For AccuWeather, I'm Monica Bilanco. Heads up. 50-foot waves are called sneaker waves. There's no way you can go into the water and be safe from a sneaker wave. There is no way. And everything is frozen up. <laughs> Let's see what's happening. Clearly, there's a frozen thing happening. Something is about to explode. We'll get to it. But let's try to pause it here while we get on with the update. Expect more storms with heavy rain. Mountain snow and rough seas to lash the west coast of the United States into Christmas Day. The main focus of the storm has been and will continue to be the northwest into the weekend. Take a look at the debris. While the strongest storms in the series has begun to push inland and waves will ease a bit, expect additional rounds of heavy seas, rough surf, coastal flooding, and beach erosion to continue in the coming days. Here's your stormy pattern. Into next week, storm track shifts south. Heads up, Sierras. Heavy rain and coast and rough seas and sneaker waves. Put on your Doc Martens where I should say Air Jordans, colder with mountain snow. So the snow levels are going to drop through the weekend. Motorists along Interstate 5 corridor should anticipate delays due to wet roads and poor visibility at times. The stronger storms will also bring the risk of trees toppling, large branches breaking, and episodes of strong winds, sneaker waves, and daughters and fathers being sucked out to the ocean, as we just saw. Heads up. East Coast storm to strike during peak of Christmas travel. Will it unravel? Storms with the greatest potential to disrupt travel will focus on the east and the northwest in the days leading up to Christmas, and we'll get to that forecast. Some of the best weather-related travel conditions are likely over the southwest in portions of the plains. So if you live there, it won't be white, and you'll be driving along just fancifully. Delays and disruptions due to weather in these areas are likely to be brief, when compared to the other areas we just mentioned. Whew. And they have no data and no maps. Just a few sentences to scare the sh Valley rain and mountain snow. There are the warnings and watches. Missoula and other areas, including West Yellowstone. Several waves of Pacific moisture will move through the Northern Rockies through Wednesday. Moderate to heavy snow is expected Tuesday and Wednesday for the mountains along the west of the divide. Valleys will see a mix of rain or snow. Winter driving conditions are expected in the mountain passes. Windy conditions will develop across southwest Montana. 
And there is an advisory Tuesday and Wednesday for Lower Clark. Fork Region, the Clearwaters, the Bitterroot, Sapphire Mountains, West Glacier. Snowfall of 5 to 18 has not budged in these areas. Heavy snow is expected at Lolo, Lost Trail, Lookout Pass. Gusty winds will create areas of blowing and drifting. Blizzard conditions reducing visibility and making it a ho-ho holiday. High wind warnings going to affect Tuesday and Wednesday for Broadwater, Jefferson, Meager counties along I-90 from Livingston to Springdale. West winds 15 to 35, gusts to 65, which are blizzard conditions. Some gusts around 75 are still being forecast around Livingston. Whew, a mainly dry break on Thursday. A cooler system will arrive, arrive Friday, bringing the threat of more snow to the valley locations. Whew, sounds like every winter in this area. Every year. I thought you said it was going to stop. Fraud. Get your hole. And pack me a bowl. Do it. Do it now. Are you dreaming of a white Christmas? Well, I am. Here's your 2018 forecast. Who has the best shot at snow? There it is. White Christmas historical probability. Under 25% in light blue. The rest of you have a chance. The map shows the probability of a white Christmas, one inch of snow on the ground or greater. And if we could load it, you could see it. There it is. Those are the facts. And that's tonight's first boom, if we have one. Yes, it's amazing. It's almost three-dimensional. Popping out at the screen at you. Boom! Heads up. There are the historical probability of your white Christmas across the upper 48, or the lower 48, or the middle 48, depending on where you live. Most of the storms that have potential to put down heavy snow in the days leading to Christmas will roll in from the Pacific and blast the Cascade Sierras and parts of the Rockies. Some of the Northeast by the Great Lakes will also experience amazing snow conditions as Santa gets stuck in the chimney because his glycemic index is a bit too high. Most of the snow will already be on the ground prior to Christmas in the West with some exceptions. A storm that dips south across California from Christmas Eve to Christmas Day may spread snow into my backyard. Heads up Southern Colorado and most of the Rockies. We're going to get a Christmas ho-ho as usual. It's a thing here. It always snows on Christmas and continues to snow for days. It's just the way of the mountains. Yes, and this is absolutely shutting down. Eight minutes in, we can't even shut a page. Eight U.S. states are on track to have their rainiest year on record. And this is while glaciers calf and global warming alarmists go insane. They predicted no snow, but it is going to be a record year. And now let's talk about the record rain and why. For many of the eastern half of the U.S., rain boots, rain jackets, and umbrellas have been an annoying well, well, ration this year. How to handle climate change? The facts are crystal clear. Climate change is real. Oh my God, we're going to have to shut her off. Jennifer, please don't continue. You're not going to like what I have to say. In fact, the... Okay. Climate change is real, and it is naturally occurring, and it's forced by the sun, so let's get on with the facts. In fact, 78 cities across the United States are on track to have their wettest years on record, which have nothing to do with CO2, nothing to do with Al Gore, the IPCC, or you. And 16 of those have already broken their yearly records, according to data from NOAA. Those are the red dots. Now, stratospheric radiation in the form of cosmic rays is at an all-time high. We're in the modern maximum. So if you're born in 1955 or earlier, which you probably weren't, except for a small percentage of you, right now is at the only time in modern history where cosmic rays have been this high. Which means that the rainstorms, the snowstorms, the cloudiness, the lack of sun that you're going to experience moving forward is going to be more than ever has been experienced in modern history, starting now. Are you picking it up? Stratospheric radiation results in increased cloud nucleation in the middle atmosphere. 
where the clouds form, where rain forms, where weather systems form. There are more clouds which hold more water, which result in more rain, which result in epic flooding. <coughs> floods that are 100 year, 500 year floods are becoming normal. And that's due to stratospheric radiation. Not chemtrails. The sun. The universe is affecting our weather. Can you imagine a bigger thing than the universe affecting our weather? If you think it's you, then you need to, you know, chill off of the Bud Light. You're not that important. Trust me. Stratospheric radiation, way more important. There is a multi-million year scale where we travel through the galactic arms of the Milky Way and that affects glaciation on Earth. We'll cover that larger scale data in a different video. But all scientific evidence points to cosmic rays as being the culprit for global cooling, increased volcanism, which re results in global cooling, increased cloud cover, which results in increased albedo, which results in global cooling to all be happening now. Not yesterday. Well, yeah, yesterday and today and in the future. But in the moment, it's going up. And yet it's the only moment you're living right now. The modern cosmic ray maximum. Now let's check out, take, take a look at your Christmas forecast, shall we? What we have is the 24-hour accumulated positive snow depth. So we'll bring it back till now. So for the next 24 hours, you can see where the snow is going to be hitting and moving across through your Saturday into your Sunday. That's the snow falling live. Monday, <coughs> Christmas Eve, you're going to have some snow in central Canada and eastern Canada, heavy snow, giving you a white Christmas prelude. Take a look. Eastern Canada, all of Quebec, going to have a white Christmas. The northwest, most areas will have a white Christmas. Here's 23rd at midnight into your 24th. The entire state of Idaho will be white. And then Christmas Eve, there's the snow. Western PA, Western New York State, a little pinch somewhere in New England. Northern North Dakota, White Christmas. Western Montana, White Christmas. All of Idaho. Western Washington. Western Oregon. The Central Mountains of the Sierras all the way down. White Christmas. In fact, it's going to be an epic white Christmas, over a foot predicted in many areas in the Sierras for Christmas Eve. Remember, this is a 24-hour. Look at that, 16 to 18 inches midday Christmas. The Sierras are going to be buffeted. Most of Nevada, white Christmas. Most of Utah, ho-ho, white Christmas. All the Western PA, I'm sorry, Western Colorado, white Christmas in my region. We are going to get it. There's Christmas Day. It looks great. Michigan, you're going to have a potential white Christmas. And then your 26th, 27th, heavy snow moving into the central area. And then there you go, Ontario, 15 inches predicted on the 28th. 15 more moving into eastern Quebec. Heavy snow moving through December 28th. New England's going to get buffeted. Look at the southern states all the way through, New through Mexico. Heavy snow in Arizona on the 28th. Heavy snow in New Mexico. Take a look at Texas. It's going to be lining up to be an epic winter. If this is the first pattern coming through here, Florida, I'm looking at a January 5th snow for you guys. Let's look at the total accumulated snowfall building up into record conditions in the West Coast here. Watch the Olympics. Watch Washington State tilt on this model. Heads up. It's going to be a deep one. If you don't have a shovel and you live in the United States, I hope you live in South Texas. <laughs> because winter is going to begin right here. This is the beginning of winter. And you can see what the next, the first week of winter brings for the lower 48. A slathering of the global warming goodness that we were promised your children would never know. Ho, 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 Mexico, Baja, even near San Diego. Take a look at the snow. 
Hey, Tijuana. Is that caravan gone yet? They're going to need an igloo. We're not making this up. The models are. So what we're looking at is a mathematical model. Yeah. Boom. Boom to math. UK weather shock chart shows Britain could be blanketed in snow to welcome the new year. Should be warm before then, but the UK could receive a blanket of snow covering the country on the first day of 2019 according to the weather charts. That's far off. And the colors make it look far out. So come check it out. All the links will be below. We're 16 minutes, 16 seconds in. We're speeding up. BBC Weather Europe braces for one meter of snow this week as temperatures plummet. <clears throat> Let's read what the fear monger rag has to say tomorrow because it's still the 18th and this is dated tomorrow. Europe is set to be hit by a meter of snow on Wednesday as low pressure from the Atlantic will clash with the eastern freezing air causing temperatures to plummet. I don't believe it. I'll be waiting on the summit. The Italian and French Alps could be hit by up to a meter of snow once a windy and wet weather front from the east will meet cold air coming from Siberia Wednesday. This man is so concerned he almost can't breathe and they let him go on air with this amazingly rough looking beard which is kind of weird. And the beard man added a lot of snow to come over the Alps. And that's all they let him point out. See him pointing at it? Zurich, Frankfurt. Yes, he's pointing. The UK and Met Office was forced to issue a danger to life weather warning as heavy rains, strong winds will batter parts of the UK, gusts of 65 miles per hour and heavy rain for Tuesday with predictions of up to 50 millimeters falling in some places. Did it fall there? Because it's already over. The weather surface issued a yellow danger of life weather warning between 5 a.m. and 9 p.m. tonight for London. The warning read rain heavy at times on Tuesday, giving difficult driving conditions windy to especially the coastal areas. Sounds like a fear monger rag. Not only is there no snow except for the Alps, which is normal, but you're all going to die because it's going to rain. Heads up, UK. I hope you got your snorkel. Europe's monster weekend snowfall totals. Let's check them out. They weren't in the UK. <laughs> hey, hey. But the big winter storm expected to bury Europe from the 12th through the 21st was in full swing. Take a look at the heavy snow in Bosnia. It looks like it's falling by the meter. Central Italy today. Oh my God, I lost the scroll. Take a look at Central Italy, severe weather Europe. Pictures of Masalata. Take a look. It even snowed on the beach in Ramini. Switzerland. That's a foot right there on the kiosk. And that was your December 15th. Sweden. Beautiful snow. Winter evening in Stockholm on the 16th. Snowing heavy. You can't even see. This is the bumper of a vehicle here. In Ranka, Romania, today, December 17th, which is yesterday. Here we can see six to a foot six inches to a foot of snow. They're claiming 70 centimeters in car in, in Romania, wherever that is. Carbunari, Karas. Where the Karas are buried. And here we can see a park bench, which is also probably pretty cold and moist to sit on. So if you're in Europe and you're in these regions, you're buried and you know it. Yeah, let's, we've got something slowing us down amazingly. It's almost like we don't exist. And that's a boom. The volcanoes, they's be exploding. We're going to get to them, so stick with us. Three men froze to death in Serbia as Arctic cold front ravages southeastern Europe. Apparently his water didn't freeze. Or, or his, whatever that is, with a thin little, what is that? Is that a, it's like a pigeon attacking him. And then look at these people. What's going on there? Belgrade, Serbia, three men reportedly froze to death in Serbia as a brutal cold spell through the Balkans, slowed traffic, disrupted power supplies, and killed three men. 
Serbian state TV reported that the body of a 48-year-old man who apparently died overnight after he drank copious amounts of Jack Daniels was found in the snow face down just feet away from the local bar. The broadcasters also said a 61-year-old drunk whose body was found in the northwestern town of Sid was so hammered that when he fell, he broke his face on a sign and then succumbed to the cold. The third victim was a homeless man whose body was found in an abandoned house in southwestern Serbian state late Monday. Yes. So, if you know any homeless drunks, let them sleep in your porch or something. I know I spent four years in jail for doing the very same thing. And that's a boom to the truth. Yeah, he left the door unlocked and the sheriffs came and got me. <laughs> Long story. But I digress. Don't tell anyone, but we just had two years of record-breaking global cooling. No fooling. NASA data shows global, global temperatures dropped sharply over the past two years. Not that you didn't know it because you're living on the Earth. But if you read mainstream media, you wouldn't know it because they're not showing it. Aaron Brown looked at the official NASA global temperatures and noticed something surprising. As the Oppenheimer Ranch has been predicting, since February 2016, the temperatures have dropped, and this is a lie, over 0.56. They've dropped 0.8 degrees in the last two years. Diamond notes that they were off and still divagating from the truth. <laughs> But the big chill is one of the biggest in the last three decades, if you haven't known. And that will result in record ice levels. So real quick, if you look at the 2017 and 2018 data, I want you to look at what the global warming alarmists were focusing on last year. The ice-free corridor here up north of Alaska here. The Bering Sea, the Bering Strait. In 2017, it was the most ice-free it had ever been and global warming and we were all burning up. And before winter, yes, four days before winter, you can see the entire Bering Sea is covered in ice. At least half a meter. All the way out to the Pacific. Last year, this year. Last year, they were complaining that this ice-free corridor went all the way into the Arctic. In fact, the Arctic was melting rapidly and there was no ice in the Arctic here. But yet no one is reporting on the 2.5 to 4 meters of ice in that same very region the next year. Which, by the way, is record ice accumulation. The fastest ice advance in winter history has just occurred in the Arctic in modern history. And we're going to get to the data from the Global Warming Alarmist site. Last year, this year. Let's check out Hudson Bay here. Last year, this year. Last year. Check out how much more ice is down here in the south. This year. Check out Greenland. Last year. Look how far down the ice is thicker this year. Yeah. Last year, this year. Facts are a bitch. But they are the facts. 6.2 south of Easter Island kicking off moments ago. This is as space weather kicked up moments ago. <clears throat> We've been sitting at this contemporaneous phi angle, which represents when the phi angle is up here above 270 degrees, this means the Earth to the Sun, the magnetic field of the Earth. The electric current is flowing from Earth to Sun when the BZ is up here. When the BZ and the phi shift, here you see the, the BZ thinning, yet the phi angle shifts here over the last 12 hours. We have a heavy shift pattern, sun to earth. Over the last six hours here, we are now connected sun to earth directly. So the sun is beaming its cosmic rays at us. Boom! And one of the largest outbursts in days, and it results in a the largest out earthquake in days, 6.2 Southeaster Island. So we're in a lithospheric warning for more large quakes happening in the next two to four seconds <laughs> based on the phi angle shift now, sun to earth, where we are being bombarded 
by the sun's electricity, cosmic rays, and radiation currently. Density is falling off. Speed is staying pretty average and low at 400 kilometers per second. It is not significant. Temperature is increasing. So here we can clearly see a correlation, which is not a causation of the earthquake based on space weather, which we just reported on. 6.2, no tsunami warning, no other quakes of note. But I want to watch you show you some simple forecasting techniques that Dutch Sense uses to blow your mind, which anyone can use. Here we saw a 4.8 kick off in the Fiji region at 600 kilometers. Now, when this happens, around 55% of the time, a larger quake happens within 6 to 12 hours right nearby. Boom, 5.4, six hours later up at 124 kilometers. So the blot echo occurs at 599, 4.8, and six hours later, 5.4 nearer the surface occurs in the same region. This is called blot echo forecasting, which only works 55% of the time or less. But that's the high average. When you see a blot echo which is down below 550 kilometers. Over half of the time, a larger earthquake in the same area occurs at towards the surface. So, blot echo, 599 kilometers at 4.8. Larger quake, 600 times larger towards the surface at 5.4. That's how you do the blot echo forecasting. I just taught you. So you can either do it yourself or continue to watch Dutch. 6.2 Southeastern Ireland, largest quake of note. No other quakes of note. We still have a cacophony of quakes in southern Alaska. And these are all still supposedly aftershocks of that major uptick months ago. The reason I believe this to be true is because the quakes we have been noting in the New Madrid zone are aftershocks of the 1811-1812 quake that happened quite a bit ago. So, I digress. Any questions, leave them in the description box. I probably will answer them. Sakurajima Worldwide Volcano News Update. Sakurajima exploded moments ago, as well as Krakatoa, Dukono, Raventador, Mayon, Savankaya, and others come check out the data for yourself and let's look at the footage because that's where the good stuff is here we are live over at etna campe fregle uptick one of the largest super volcano caldera is now being warned as the imminent threat to humanity which i concur with i predicted a year ago that stromboli would uptick and kill many tourists. That is still my prediction as we head into the summer. It will be a bummer. Stromboli was just upticking earlier ago. You can see Sakurajima also continuing to outgas. I want to bring you uh, some startling information. Sakurajima has been exploding out of the main caldera rim here. You can see this dark gray circle. This is right above the main rim. But about two hours ago, and if we can get to some of that footage, I'm gonna look at it real quick here. Hopefully I can share that with you. Let's go back here. What I noticed was that yesterday we reported on a new fissure at Ambrin and that crazy guy who said he was the first person to see it or whatever was jumping up and down for joy but earlier today a new fissure began erupting here on the flanks of Saku and if I can get you some of that footage then I could save some face here we're looking for it bear with me Okay, mark my words. I'm going to show you tomorrow. Literally, out here, do you see Sakurajima here? And out here in the flat, right where I'm pointing to in this region, there is a new eruptive area, which I really wish I could show you. It's probably not on this live stream because I noticed it about two hours ago. 
<clears throat> Let's just go back to the beginning. Bear with me, and we'll look at some amazing Krakatoa footage, which is going to blow your mind. Now, this is footage from the last six weeks, and it is indicative of the ongoing nature of this eruption out at Krakatoa, daughter of Krakatoa, which is about to blow up. If not this one, Campe Felegre. So enjoy the footage while we parse the other video. Okay, we froze up. Let's put down the flute and save the situation. <laughs> Please give it back. We're 32 minutes in and we're frozen as if we are in the Arctic where we would never see snow before. <laughs> there it is. I'll leave you links below to the Krakatoa footage. That came from Volcano Discovery. And here we have the Etna uptick just two hours ago at Volcano YT. If we could parse this up. Wow, connectivity issues tonight. I apologize. Bear with us. 33 minutes, 57 seconds in. Let me tell you a little bit about what's going on. We've been repeating this paper since the channel launched, but those of you that are new probably haven't seen it. So we're going to go over here to ResearchGate. If you want to research me, I'm a scientist that is listed on ResearchGate. And some of my papers back in the early 90s actually are on the internet, unbeknownst to me until I started this channel. Over 7,488 reads on my abstract, 70 this week. So there are definite people in the mainstream that are checking my credentials and they're unable to shut me down because they have no basis to. Many people that are non-scientists on the internet are being shut down because they just do some background research and they find out that this person has no business saying what they're saying. I digress because I don't think that academia or degrees or any of that has any basis in understanding scientific knowledge as fact. In fact, the majority of people that were my students are incapable of understanding the scientific method. Not only that, they were incapable of understanding almost any of the things I said. And this comes from years of teaching thousands of people at the university level. 
over 90% of them are just incapable of understanding the scientific method. It's just a f fact of life. And it's very disheartening to understand that. But those of you that have been following us, that I redundantly drive the facts into your head, you respect that. Now, here's the paper, the groundbreaking work that no one has been able to discredit since 2011. Explosive volcanic eruptions are triggered by cosmic rays. Volcano as a bubble chamber. And since this came out, <clears throat> there has been recent breakthroughs in just the last year that are showing that the idea of a magma chamber is probably untrue. Magma moves along surfaces in the earth. And I concur with that because I'm a stratigrapher. Everything happens along surfaces. Evolution does not exist, but species on one side of the surface are completely different than the species on the other side of the surface. So there are geologically instantaneous moments on earth where everything is triggered. Volcanoes, the sea level shifts hundreds of feet instantly, and evolution instantly happens, which is not evolution. It's called speciation. So everything you've ever been taught is a lie. There is no such thing as gradualism. We live in a catastrophic universe perturbed cyclically at regular periods by catastrophic events that drive speciation and destroys empires. Explosive volcanic eruptions triggered by cosmic rays. Read the abstract. If you have any questions, leave it below. Now, we're getting frozen up on this Volcano YT. I cannot show you that Sakurajima new vent, but I will show it to you tomorrow, I promise. We are not going to donate to the Guardian ever, but we're going to use it to bolster some information from the alarmist side. Scientists discovered 91 volcanoes below the Antarctic sheet. Now, these volcanoes have been there the entire time, but the sheet began to catastrophically melt in small regions. As a whole, Antarctica is at record levels and has been for decades. Anyone who says differently is lying to you. The melting is occurring in the subsurface under the sheet while record snow builds on the surface of the sheet. So the overall surface mass budget of the Antarctic has been increasing and is at record levels since 2012. Trust me, anyone saying anything different has does not have the facts. But Last year, in August, scientists announced they discovered 91 volcanoes below the sheet. This is because these volcanoes have become active in recent times because of cosmic rays, which in 2011 were posited to cause massive eruptions. So we'll get to that paper. <laughs> explosive volcanic eruptions triggered by cosmic rays. So, volcanoes with silica-rich and highly viscous magma, the explosive ones, i.e. Mount St. Helens, tend to produce violent explosive eruptions that result in disasters in local communities. They also result in massive melting of the Antarctic, which rings bells to global warming alarmists only to find out that it's volcanoes melting the ice sheet and not the climate. So, while they got the funding to study the global warming, they realized that the cosmic rays were calling, causing explosive volcanic eruptions beneath the Antarctic ice sheet, and they were able to discover 91 newly erupting volcanoes below that sheet, over a mile below that sheet. This is in addition to the meager 47 that they were already aware about. So, as cosmic rays increase, this number is going to increase. And over at the biggest global warming alarmist page here, 
Arctic Sea Ice News at the NSIDC. Yeah, this is their 4th of December post autumn freeze up amps up and they go on to cherry pick that the arctic sea ice extent for november was the ninth lowest this is out of only 30 years so saying the ninth lowest is very disingenuous which means it's right on the average so they're still trying to hold on to their narrative claiming that november is the ninth lowest ice in 30 years oh my god that's like not even a record and despite relatively flat fast ice growth during november they're lying again here from mid-october according to their data and i checked this i spent hours checking this from every source so not a single human will be able to deny this fact from mid-october right here through the first, through mid-November, this is four weeks, the amount of Arctic sea ice extent increased greater than any time in recorded history. So, in the last six weeks of your life, Arctic sea ice has increased greater than any other time in human history when we've been recording it. Since mid-October to today, the Arctic sea ice extent has grown faster and is greater than any other time in human history. Who's reporting on that? Well, the <laughs> they just did. The NSIDC just reported on it because they gave us the data, but they would never say that over here. In fact, they say we're all burning up and it's going to hell. This vertical line that's larger than any other line in history is indicative of warming. See how it's going vertically, opposite of their warming line here? The largest increase ever in Arctic ice extent is indicative of global warming. Let me repeat that. The largest increase in average Arctic sea ice extent ever recorded in modern human history is because of global warming. That's all we'll talk about that. Hey, have you gotten out and learned how to fail in the garden? Did you know gardening could be the hobby that helps you live to 100? Many of you don't want to live that old. But I assure you, after the reset, you'll want to be alive because there's going to be no one telling you what you can and cannot do. That means that you're free. First time ever. And if you get dirt under your fingernails and in your mouth and you swallow some, it is the micronutrients and the microbiome that kickstart your immunity into overdrive. It has been shown scientifically, not by the mainstream, but by the real scientists, that there is an unexplainable phenomenon that occurs as a result of gardening. And that's caused many people to live up to 13 years longer than the rest of the folks that live on this planet. So if you need a, any incentive to start growing your own food, how about stopping to be sick? Isn't that a good incentive? How about the fact that people that garden live longer than anyone else on the planet? And there's no scientific data to explain it. But you don't need a reason, do you? If gardening could help you live longer than anyone on Earth, why wouldn't you garden? It's cheaper than supplements. It's cheaper than doctors. It's cheaper than chemotherapy. It's cheaper than any of the bullshit they've been feeding you for your entire life. Gardening will save your life in more ways than one. Increased health, increased vitality, you get to learn, stimulate your brain, grow your own food, eliminate pesticides, eliminate chemicals, increase the nutritive power of the food you eat by 100 times. Grow your own food. I almost feel like an idiot that I have to say this day after day after day after day. Delta Four heavy rocket launch scrubbed, which means that no aliens will be seen. 
Delta Four Heavy NRO rocket lifts off August 28th, 2013 from Vandenberg. Tuesday evening's planned launch of the rocket carrying reconnaissance satellites in orbit from Vandenberg out Air Force Base in Santa Barbara has been scrubbed, which means you will not see any of the amazing footage of aliens launching off the coast like you did during the SpaceX launch earlier in the summer. The launch is now planned for 5.44 p.m. Wednesday when Tyler will be reporting on increased alien sightings at that time. So if you live in California near Santa Barbara and it's around 6 o'clock Wednesday, it's not aliens. Get it? <laughs> We're trying to make these shorter. The only problem is the information flowing out is getting larger. So it's almost impossible for me to shorten these videos. And I apologize. How prepared are you? Let's get quickly prepared. I went over to the store. I still don't have the list for the Navajo kids, but bear with me. I'm working on it. I don't know why Derek hasn't got me that address yet or the list. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. But what I did spend is three hours today on researching some long term food storage issues. <clears throat> now we have a link to my Patriot Supply down below, but that does not cover all the bases. There are many other places where you can get emergency preparedness food. And I recommend you have a diverse selection of preparedness foods. But I'm going to show you the most important and some of the most awesome things I've, in conclude, I've included in the long-term food storage wing of the Oppenheimer Ranch store. It has 72 hours to six months worth of food at one time. The Northwest Fork gluten-free six-month emergency food supply is kosher, non-GMO, and vegan. 10-year shelf life, thousands of servings, $840. There are other ways to go. Every one of the number one rated preparedness food is in this store. Pinto beans, 15 bucks for five pounds of them. Last 25 years. The most important thing is what I'm about to show you. And we have some of the most amazing things in the store. Check it out. It's too long to gut cover. But we have for 120 bucks. I'll get to that. But first, let's talk about butter. Canned butter. Many people don't know this exists. There's also canned cheese. This was spearheaded in Europe. French made the canned butter famous, and I've been talking about it, but we just put it in the store. Red Feather Creamery canned butter from New Zealand has a stable shelf life of over a decade, and it costs about the same as regular butter. Right here, I'm showing you. 20 pounds for $159. 20 pounds of butter at the store is, costs 100 bucks here. Anytime. Good butter. This is top of the line butter, not GMO garbage. This is coming from local farmers. There are no preservatives in here. It is no artificial colors or flavors. It's butter. One fifty nine for twenty four cans. I even have cheese in a can, real cheese from the same company. So here you can split it for the same price. Get half butter and half cheese. 12 cans of each. The 24 cam super combo. In a grid down scenario, this is worth thousands of dollars. Trust me, one of the most important products you can get. Save up. $150 is not a lot. That's almost a year's worth of butter and cheese because you're not going to be going crazy. Trust me. You're going to be thinking a lot different in the times ahead. Come check out the preparedness store. The most important thing I put in was coffee, coffee substitutes. If you're a cheap prick, look for the G7 3-in-1 instant coffee. This comes from all the Chinese stores over in Philly and New York. You can pick this up. It's actually cheaper online than in the store. You can get 50 plus two sticks original. This has coffee, cream, and sugar all in one packet. 50, 50 cups. 12 bucks. 
50 cups of coffee for 12 bucks with cream and sugar. That's worth it. If you like General Foods International coffees, you'll love G7. There are ways to survive and thrive in the future. I recommend beans. The only problem is they'll spoil. So you can come over. Uh, this is a great selection, and I recommend this. This is just organic Colombian. Freeze-dried. Do you know how many cups of coffee is in that bag? They say 240 cups. 30 bucks. This is organic Colombian freeze-dried coffee. That's it. Nothing else in there. That's the way I would go. It's already vacuum sealed. You double vacuum seal it, put it in another mylar, in another bucket, and 30 years from now, this bag of Colombian coffee could be worth a million dollars. I'm not even making it up. It could be worth the equivalent of a million dollars. Think about it. The best $30 you ever spent in your life. And if you get in a pinch, you have coffee for the next year for $30. Instant coffee for a year. Oh dear. Say it ain't so. If you're cheap, you can get two cans of butter for $19, but it's overpriced. You can only get a good price if you buy it in bulk. So I recommend you buy the full 24 can case for $159. Cheapest price I can find, free shipping. There's also other huge... There's cheaper coffees here. Trader Joe's 100% instant coffee you can get for 18 bucks. <clears throat> Easy Prep Colombian 41 pouch for 14 bucks. There's lots of choices so that you can look around and get what you want. For 120 bucks, you can get enough storage material to know how to start. Long term water storage system, BPA free water bags, five year shelf life, 50 gallon set, 100 bucks. You can put other liquids in there. Anything you've never thought about. Bags of water? 50 gallon bags of water? Who would have thunk it? Uh, we also included uh, entry level preparedness stuff. Dry goods. These things are called survival tabs. Non-GMO, 25 year shelf life. All you need is three tabs a day and you'll live. I mean, there's crazy stuff in the store. Everything that's important to survive and thrive in the future. Here, check it out. Mylar bags. You're going to need these. Gallon Mylar bags with 500cc oxygen absorbers for long-term emergency food storage in 10 packs. How many do you need? Free shipping. You get the bags, the oxygen absorbers, and you're good to go. All you need is a sealer. Go get one of those food storage units and you'll be sealing these babies in a second. Heads up. Pack fresh. Pack long term. Save your arse. We love you. And if you're totally insane and you're one of the people telling me we need guns and ammo in our store, I can't offer that. We will be shut off the air instantly. But what I can do is recommend that you all go buy all the guns and ammo you can. And if you're a gun freak and an ammo freak and you're looking for 5.56 five, or 7.62 by 51 ammo because you have assault weapons, you can now buy ammo by the barrel. A barrel of ammo. How much ammo do you need? You need it all. How much does a gun owner need? In a time like this, you need all of it. So if you want to buy it by the barrel... And you get this killer $50 barrel, too, to, to use for burning or whatever you want afterwards. Filled to the brim with 2,500 rounds of 855-556 NATO or 7,500 rounds of XM80 762 by 51 NATO ammo in metal bulk barrels that are painted and attractive and eye-catching. The price tag is steep, $3,900. For 2,500 rounds, which brings it down to about a quarter a round. And for 7,500 rounds for four grand on the 762. Now, at my local Walmart, I can get it on sale for this price anytime. But if you're looking for barrels for long term storage with 12,500 rounds per barrel because you're looking for a little bit bigger storage, 
I'll leave you links to the Brownells, now selling ammunition by the barrel. And that's a barrel of ammunition, boom. Guys, I hope you got something out of the video. Volcanoes are exploding. Cosmic rays are increasing, resulting in the volcanoes that are exploding, which result in increased cooling because of the albedo effect, which also results in all-time record flooding events due to atmospheric compression and nucleation of clouds in the middle atmosphere. The science cannot be clearer. Our goal cannot be clearer. We're not here to scare you, we're here to prepare you. We've survived every single one of these events for millions of years. Humanity, the empire dies, the humans make it. What will we make of it? That's your choice. Will you buy it by the barrel? Be safe, we love you. The time is now to grow your own food. Stockpile three years of dry goods. And to hide it. Don't tell people what you're doing. They will come and get it. Be safe.